us to this day with all the preparations that have gone through the planning, the commitment from participants, organizers, sponsors, partners, and various stakeholders, we are grateful that you have seen us through the planning stage and we are here. We commit the program into your hand and pray that everything that is discussed here, everything that is shared, the ideas that are put forth, that they will yield good fruit to the glory of this university and for the benefit of the participants. In your name we have prayed. Amen. So, I would like to first acknowledge our sponsors before we get started. This is very important. You don't want to forget that. So, here we go. We have sponsoring this program this year, Enterprise Group of Companies. Shall we give them a hand of applause? They have a stand outside, and so during the breaks, uh, please visit their stand and see what products they have to offer for the betterment of your life. Thank you. We also have Agricultural Development Bank, ADB. Give them a hand of applause for sponsoring us. We also have our official Conference Hotel, Chances Hotel, located here in beautiful Oxygen City of Ho. Give them a hand, Chances Hotel. And then we have our two organizations that are catering this event, Fred's Kitchen Ho and Alon Restaurants and Events. Let's acknowledge them. And then lastly, we have Ghana Water Company Limited. Let's give them a hand. Okay. Let me now invite to the podium the chairman of the planning committee in the person of Professor Margaret Japong, who has held no, <laughs> held no uh, holds in bringing forth everything to make this a successful event. Professor Japong, please come up. Thank you very much. Good morning, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Madam Vice Chancellor, Pro VC, WR Ghana Country Office, and all distinguished invited guests, welcome to UHAS. Welcome to Ho. I'm going to give you the purpose of this meeting. IT, can you help me, please? Thank you. So for those of us who know, the University of Health and Allied Sciences is a research intense uh, university. Research is part of our teaching and learning, and we create a really strong desire and interest in research among our faculty. So even from undergraduate level right up to postgraduate level, we inculcate the um, idea of research into our students and faculty. And we do quite give a lot of visibility to research that is conducted in the university. Two years ago, we decided to start what we call the research day at UHAS. So we started with our first research day, and it was basically to facilitate and disseminate research findings in the university community, first of all, and beyond. Mainly because we were a new university, and we did not know what each other was doing. There were several schools 
and we did not know what was happening in, in any of the schools amongst ourselves. So we decided to have the first research day to showcase what uh, work that faculty were doing and to enable us to learn from each other about the activities that we were engaged in. We saw it as a platform for networking and for future collaborative work and to identify any new areas of research and create a tradition of this annual research days in the university. In the last two research days that we have held, we focused first of all on UHA. So the first one, we didn't really bring too many people from outside. We just focused on those of us here. We had engaging keynote addresses on our theme. The first uh, research day, the, impact, the theme was impacting our world through multidisciplinary health research. And our keynote speaker was Professor Richard Adanu, who is currently director of the College of Physicians and Surgeons. In the second year, Professor Ellis Ousuda, the Pro Vice Chancellor of KNUST, gave us a keynote address on the role of specialized universities in national development. We were treated to several oral presentations in scientific sessions, there were poster sessions, and we featured um, our health research centers from the Ghana Health Service. They were here prominently, and we also featured our regional and district health directories. We had exhibitions by our six schools. There were panel discussions featuring our deans. We gave out awards. Um, the courses, the uh, conference was awarded CPD points. So several doctors and uh, public health physicians and others received CPD points. And there were quite high points. I think for the medics, it was nine CPD points or so. And then we held a post-conference paper writing workshop. We had a few oral presentations and a few posters. So for those who remember, um, so let me go back to this. For those who were here, if you remember, this young man who was a national service person at the time, he had just completed his first degree here, challenged his, his seniors to a wonderful presentation. And when he got to question and answer, he was fantastic. So we gave him a special prize uh, because of that. So we believe that the young ones here, it is possible to stand on stage with your seniors and be able to talk. Then we had the exhibitions. I remember this, the School of uh, Medicine had all kinds of human parts which they were displaying. And then at the end of the day, when we gave the prizes, it appeared that School of Allied Health Sciences was winning prizes year one and year two. And people were not happy. So this year, people are poised to take away the prize from School of Allied Health Sciences. I'm sure they'll not be happy with me, but that is the challenge. So let's see how it goes. So why are we here? This year, we decided that instead of calling it a research day, we wanted to have a proper conference. We wanted to create the atmosphere where young faculty and students will be able to submit abstracts online like it's done with any international conference, be able to meet strict deadlines, be able to submit things according to when they are supposed to do it. Um, I can tell that story at, uh, on a different date. But we are here. We submitted the, the abstract. So we, we had all the strict deadlines. We had um, pre-conference registration. And yesterday, we decided to have on-site registration because a lot of people were saying, we missed the deadline. Can you let us register on-site? So that is why we have on-site registration. We decided to choose the theme, forging partnerships in meeting the sustainable development goals, the role of academic and research institutions. Why? Because we are less than 10 years to meeting the sustainable development goals. And with the ever popular impact ranking, rankings by Times Higher Education, several academic and research institutions are being asked to showcase what they are doing, the contribution they are making towards um, meeting the sustainable development goals. And let me proudly say that UHA's two years running has been first for SDG3. We are health research trainings. Oh, clap for us. We are health research, a uh, health training institution, and we were very happy that we got ranked um, for that. Now, we are going paperless, and everything you need to know about this conference is online. Very soon, we'll have the QR code you can scan and have the soft copy of the program and everything on your phones uh, to be able to look at.
But we have a great lineup of speakers, and Director of Public Affairs will be showing us the list of speakers very soon. Some of them have arrived, some of them we are waiting um, for. Having gone through several months of preparations, we are going to be having oral and poster presentations from the various research centers, in fact, a wide group of people. And we are just happy to note that even people from outside the shores of this country saw the adverts and, and re registered. Yesterday, we had the pre-conference workshop organized by Elsevier. It was wonderful. And we had several people from University of Geneva, Georgetown University, York University, all joining us online. It was really fantastic. We'll be having people join us um, in person from um, Nairobi, from Ivory Coast, from Nigeria. It is Thanksgiving, so our colleagues from um, the US cannot join us. I've told them that next year we'll do it in a period where it's not Thanksgiving so that they can be here with us. We'll be listening to 71 oral presentations and we've mounted 67 posters. And we have a total of 180 registered participants as at yesterday. And maybe today we'll be having a few more. So we are happy to note that a lot of us have shown interest and will be attending this. I want to thank especially two young retired professors, Professor um, Paula Muna and Professor Adeleke. They were old men, Prof is here, Prof Adeleke is here. And I'm recognizing them because they took the pains to write abstracts, submit on time, they registered, they submitted everything on time, and I was so proud of them. So to the young ones, uh, some of us were slightly late. These old men remembered the time, no, young men, remember, <laughs> and were able to submit. So we are really, really grateful to you. So look out for their sessions and attend and listen to their presentations. I have a lot of people to thank for this, um, for where we have reached for this, a whole list, university management, the organizing committee, I've stressed them, calling them in the middle of the night, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., but we are here. I want to thank all of you. And I want to say, ways of, yes, let's clap for them. Everybody has done a wonderful job. Protocol team, all the reviewers, presenters, all rapporteurs, everybody, thank you, thank you very much. Ways of, to the Volta region, uh, take time, if you have, to go to our canopy walk. There are several beautiful places in the Volta region. Enjoy the Oxygen City, foster new collaborations, and hope to see you next year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Jackson. Now I'm going to invite our registrar, Ms. Yamankwa Opuni, to come up and introduce our chairperson. Give it up for Ms. Yamankwa. Thank you, Mrs. Jua. Our Vice Chancellor didn't want this part, but I insisted. And Professor Magajapo, please, they are not old men. They are senior youth, senior youth. Yes, please, note the difference. Senior youth, I call them. And we have a couple of them in UHAS doing great things. I introduce to you our chairperson for today's event. She is Professor Lydia Ziato, AKA Prof. One. Prof. One, the whole Ghana. In fact, globally, she is Professor One. Professor Wan is the Vice Chancellor of the University of Health and Allied Sciences. Let me give you a brief background of her education. She holds a bachelor's degree in nursing, a master's degree in nursing from the University of Ghana. She holds a PhD in nursing 
from the University of Western Cape in South Africa. Before becoming the Vice Chancellor of this great university, Professor Lydia Ziato was the, held appointment as a bedside nurse at Mampobi Polyclinic, Accra, before she joined the University of Ghana in 2001. At Legon, she rose through the ranks from a nurse technician to become a full professor. For us here who know the rudiments of academia, for somebody who begins as a nurse technician, rising to become a full professor, you would appreciate the effort that she put into this. Cumulatively, she worked for 20 years before joining this university. Now, her involvement with boards and committees. Professor Ziato has not only excelled in academia, but has also been a guiding force in various esteemed boards and committees within the academic community. She has extensive corporate governance experience having served on several boards and committees locally and internationally. She also has experience in mentoring multidisciplinary doctoral students and has taught different levels from certificate to doctoral and in different institutions within and outside Ghana. For those of you who watch television, the awards Professor Lydia Ziato has received are enormous, including the legendary Women of the Year 2023. Shall we give it to our Vice Chancellor, who is the chairperson for today's program? You have already come. I was going to humbly request two ushers. To usher Prof upstage. But since you are here, Paul, please take over. Thank you very much. Shall we give it to her? Thank you very much, uh, Madam Registrar. Good morning. I hope you slept well. Did you? Okay. I warmly welcome all of us to the UHAS Research Conference. I give a special welcome to the WHO country representative, Professor Francis Casolo. Let's give him a round of applause. A special welcome to the Foundation Acting Dean of the School of Pharmacy of this university, Professor Clement Adeleke. I also warmly welcome our esteemed partners from the UNFPA. Are you here? Not yet. Okay. Pat, are you here? Not yet. Okay. So I'm sure when they join us, we will acknowledge them. Acknowledge my Pro VC, my registrar, my deans and directors and all our international guests or participants, both in person and online. Acknowledge our participants from McGill University. Uh, please give me a wave. Let's give her a round of applause. I understand we have a guest also from Kenya. Are you here? Um, not yet, okay. So we acknowledge all those online also, and we thank you very much for uh, participating in our conference. So a few months ago, the director of Institute for Health Research, which we popularly call IHR, came to see me about this idea. And I said, go for it, director, because it is an opportunity for us to work with other people and to showcase 
what we are for. So I give a special acknowledgement to the Institute of Health Research of this university and the director in charge of the institute for the efforts, for the efforts, for the efforts. Um, at the point, <laughs> it was really difficult, um, but she knows that I appreciate the efforts. It was a huge effort to, to make this day a success. Apart from that, the planning committee that she worked with did a yeoman's job to see us as far. But I want to acknowledge, most especially, Fidelis Anumu. Where is Fidelis? I'm sure he's somewhere still running around. Fidelis, come, come. I want you to come because you did tremendously, tremendously extra, extra. Come. So Fidelis is supposed to be in South Africa uh, for his PAD now, but he came down because of this conference. So Fidelis, come. Come and let me give you. Uh, so Fidelis happens to be the director's engine man. So we appreciate all the efforts. Uh, I can... Okay, where is that? <laughs> so, with that said, as part of the requirements for rising as an academic, one of the things that we look for is your conference participation, the dissemination of the knowledge that you have found as an academic in your research, the collaborations you establish in your network as a whole. And so having a research dissemination day alone was not enough. And coming as far as starting this research conference is a good opportunity for us as academics to develop our impact and create our network. We also have a very strong relationship with our uh, three research institutions or research centers uh, under the Ghana Health Service, Dodo, in Tampo, and Navrongo. In fact, my two previous predecessors all had their journey uh, through these research centers, and even our current director of IHR has also a strong connection to the research centers. So we are working very hard to have an MOU with these research centers. So this research conference will be a collaborative effort for UHATS and our three research centers. Our research centers, the staff there, would be part of the faculty, adjunct faculty of the university, and our staff will also work with them collaboratively on different projects. I also want to acknowledge that we are also working very hard to have an MOU with WHO. I'm sure today, this afternoon at 2 o'clock, we have a meeting with them to finalize the MOU. And we would also be very, very happy to have WHO on board in our subsequent um, research conference. And having the country rep here today signifies the commitment of WHO to work with a university that is ranked number one in terms of SDGs. So thank you very much, Professor Casolo, for the commitment to work with you has. Again, we have 14 postgraduate programs, and I'm very confident with the number of abstracts received and the number of oral and poster um, presentations that have been accepted. Majority, I'm hoping, will be from our postgraduate students. We want to give you the foundation upon which you can fly in your discipline or in your career. Again, the conference pro provides opportunity for us to learn new things, new findings, current findings, up-to-date findings. And when we implement these in our various fields, 
I'm very confident that it will contribute to the overall well-being of the people we serve. And so further contributing to the achievement of the SDGs and also universal health coverage. I want to reiterate the fact that the management of the university, the University Council, is very, very committed to support the research agenda of the university because it is in our vision, it stays in our mission, it is in our strategic plan that we will be a university with focus on cutting edge research. It will research and we don't disseminate what have we achieved. And so it is important for us as a university to continue keeping the touch of research burning here at the University of Health and Allied Sciences. I also um, want to commend the School of Pharmacy for driving the agenda of establishing an MOU with the Food and Drugs Authority. We all know that health research is not a university single activity. We need partnership from all the agencies that can help us achieve our objective. And so School of Pharmacy, kudos to the work that you are doing. I also want to acknowledge the Institute of Traditional Alternative Medicine for all the collaborative effort they are making to make sure that that aspect of healthcare is also promoted. In fact, it is one of the pillars upon which our collaboration with WHO is going to be based. We want to promote our own traditional and alternative medicine. What I'm also happy about is the fact that when you attend a UHAS research conference or UHAS research day in the past, you will receive some points for continuous professional development. And this will help you to renew your license that will keep you active as a practitioner within your discipline. So on my own behalf, on behalf of the council management, I want to work, warmly welcome you to the University of Health and Allied Sciences. We want to say we appreciate you being part of this maiden UHAS research conference. We want to say that together we are making history. And we want to say that take time to um, our university is very beautiful, you know. Uh, in my eyes, it is very, very beautiful. So take time to walk around to see our beautiful university. In fact, there is a more beautiful structure coming up about five minutes or so walk down the road. We call it China Phase 2. Uh, go and look at it. Next year, by the time you come back, we are, we are there. And we thank the Chinese government very much for helping the university. So finally, before I take my seat, I want to assure the Institute of Health Research that management is solidly behind you and will give you all the support to make sure that next year this happens. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. Wan. I want to acknowledge a couple more people, and then I will introduce our partner representatives to give us their uh, statements pertaining to this conference. Uh, I see here we have the director of the Kintampo Health Research Center in the person of Dr. K.P. Asante. You're welcome. <laughs> We also have Dr. Senanu Jokotu, Deputy Regional Director of Health Services. Dr. Jokotu, where are you? Ah, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay. 
Uh, and now, bear with me one second. We have some representatives. I don't think that all of them are here, but I want to introduce uh, two of them so that they can then come up and give us um, the statements that they have prepared for us. And so first, I'd like us to welcome Professor Francis Kasolo, the country representative of the WHO in Ghana. Professor Kasolo, as you already heard from VC, uh, is a recent and very new friend, a very dedicated friend of UHAS, and so we're very happy that he's here. Uh, he's the country representative for WHO, an infectious disease physician with specialization in clinical virology. He has worked with WHO in various capacities for the past 20 years. I know that's hard to believe, seeing as he looks so young with no gray in his hair. Uh, he has been responsible for advising the regional director on policy and strategic issues on Africa. He also served as director for Ebola preparedness with a UN mission on emergency Ebola response in Accra in 2014 as well as Director for Disease Prevention and Control at WHO Regional Office for Africa from 2011 to 2015. Professor Casello, you have the mic. Thank you very much uh, for the introduction and the welcome that uh, I always receive when we visit uh, this lovely uh, purpose Belt Health University. Professor Lydia Azioto, our chairperson and the vice chancellor of the University of Health and Allied Sciences. I recognize uh, Dr. Jokoto from the uh, Volta Region Health Directorate. Our keynote speaker, Professor Michelle Turner, uh, the Director, Emeritus Swiss Tropical and Public Health Institute, Basel in Switzerland. Professor Margaret Japon, the Director, IHR. I must add that when I saw IHR that you are the Director, IHR, I was, I was uh, pleasantly surprised because in the acronym of the World Health Organization, IHR refers to the international health regulations. Then, <laughs> and thank you for organizing this. Uh, Recording in progress. Our distinguished faculty members and academia. I also recognize uh, the senior youths who I'll call the champions uh, that worked hard to develop. Uh, what we see here in uh, U.S. Distinguished partners and guests, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. I bring you greetings from the uh, global leadership of the World Health Organization and also express my personal gratitude to the organizing committee for inviting me to deliver this statement on behalf of the World Health Organization on your 23rd, 23 annual research conference being held under the theme, Forging Partnership in Achieving the Sustainable Development Goals, the role of academia, or rather academic research institutions. Indeed, partnerships at all levels are crucial in achieving the sustainable development goals. Research institutions are essential partners in the pursuit of the SDGs, contributing through knowledge generation, policy generation, innovation, capacity building, advocacy for new policies, uh, uh, collaboration and monitoring and evaluation. Professor Chair, the World Health Organization, as you know, was created as a directing and contributing authority to global health, enabling the nations of the world to act together for the health of all people based on the values of human rights, 
universality and equity. High quality research and the evidence that research generates are therefore critical to the World Health Organization technical advice that it gives to the member states and commitment to the attainment by all people of the highest possible level of health. In our medium-term strategic plan, the World Health Organization has aligned this plan to the Sustainable Development Goals and focused on three interconnected strategic priorities to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. These interconnected areas or priorities refer to one, achieving universal health coverage, which by the way is one of the targets of the Sustainable Development Goal number three, addressing health emergencies and promoting healthier populations. In essence, the World Health Organization's role in forging partnerships it is intrinsically linked to the achievement of specific sustainable development goals, reflecting a commitment to holistic development that address health, environment, education, gender, and inequality challenges of our, on a global scale. Professor Chair, in line with the request from the organizers, please allow me at this juncture to highlight uh, some activities that the World Health Organization has been undertaking in collaboration with Ghanaian institutions and indeed the Ghanaian government and other member states across the, re the re continent in line with your theme of this conference. I will address these in the context of the sub-themes that you've given for this conference. Firstly, on the sub-theme, inclusive partnerships among academia, research, health sector, and industry for human development and well-being, which specifically refer to Sustainable Development Goal 3 and 9. The World Health Organization has been at the forefront of fostering inclusive partnerships, crucial for achieving these two sustainable development goals. These partnerships span academia, research, the health sector, and industry. Here in Ghana, the World Health Organization has partnered with the School of Public Health, for example, of the University of Ghana, in building capacity for research, surveillance, and monitoring and evaluation for malaria elimination in a number of uh, malaria endemic anglophone countries. Through these collaborative activities, more than 250 health professionals from at least 15 countries have been trained over the past 12 years in these areas of research, malaria research, surveillance, as well as monitoring and evaluation. By promoting collaboration, the World Health Organization has helped accelerate progress in medical research, encourage innovation in healthcare, and facilitated the dissemination of evidence-based practices. The organization's emphasis on inclusive partnerships aligns also with the Sustainable Development Goal 17, which um, highlights partnership for the goals, reflecting the recognition that sustainable development requires collective action and collaboration across various sectors. Furthermore, the World Health Organization is strengthening the health economics research and data analytics capabilities of the Ministry of Health in Ghana and its agencies through a partnership with the Department of Health Policy and Management of the School of Public Health of the University of Ghana to train Ministry of Health staff to acquire a master's degree in health economics. As of now, this partnership has produced 37 graduates from this program who will support the ministry through health financing, economic analysis, economic evaluations, and data analytics to build robust, resilient, and responsive health systems and services that can sustain equitable delivery of integrated packages of essential services to all. WHO is also pursuing a similar partnership with the School of Public Health at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in Kumasi that we hope will cater for the northern belt of this great country. 
The World Health Organization is also collaborating with the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons in research improvement initiatives, specifically working together in building research modules for the training of residents that enroll with the college. We are also working in the area of capacity building for sustainable local manufacture of vaccines and medic medic medical products that meet the standard and quality uh, set by the World Health Organization. We've been providing the manufacturers support to attend good manufacturing practices across the industries through direct advice, but also affording them opportunities for training in this area. Trainees in the area of biomanufacturing uh, also include academia and researchers as well as regulators. Another key area of work that we are focusing on under the sub theme relates to the, uh, the knowledge generation in relation to the antimicrobial resistance work that is being done across Africa and, including, and includes Ghana's academias, especially those at the University of Ghana and the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Turning to the sub-theme on environmental protection, climate change, and health, which, which clearly uh, focuses on sustainable development goal 13 and 15. And recognizing the inter, inter, intersectionality of the environmental issues, climate change and public health, the World Health Organization has engaged in partnership that contribute to SDG 13, which is climate action, and SDG 15, which is life on land. Collaborations with academic institutions has focused on understanding the health impacts of climate change and environmental degradation. More recently, through the Ghana Health Service, the World Health Organization has been supporting the consolidation and synthesis of evidence on vulnerability and adaptation assessment to climate health-related risks in Ghana. The results of this an as, uh, analysis will, results, will be used to inform climate change mainstreaming in health policy, as well as guide the health sector's commitment to take intersectorial action to reduce climate-related health risks. By emphasizing the health environmental environment nexus, the World Health Organization has played a pivotal role in addressing interconnected challenges and contributing to sustainable development. In 2022, for example, the World Health Organization supported a baseline analysis informed by a human security framework that underscored social, educational, governance, and environmental determinants that influence community health and forest resource use. Capacity of health workers, including environmental health workers of the local government, was built to address the environmental determinants of health. Under phase one of our urban health initiative, and working with uh, stakeholders, namely the Accra municipality, we have generated evidence on the economic cost of air pollution, health and economic impacts of transport intervention, and modeling the impacts of urban policies on disease outcomes. Professor Chair, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me now turn to the last sub-theme on good health and well-being quality education, gender equality, and reduction of inequity. As you know, these areas focus on sustainable development goals 3, 4, 5, and 10, and that the World Health Organization partnerships with a number of academic institutions have contributed significantly to the Sustainable Development Goal 3 and extended their impact to Sustainable Development 4 on quality education, 5 on gender equality, and of course, 10 on, reduced, on reducing inequalities. Collaborative efforts prior, have prioritized health education across and, and address gender-specific health concerns and aim to reduce health disparities among the diverse population. For example, we've been working and supporting ongoing analysis to document the situation of maternal health, maternal mental health in Ghana to inform integrated maternal health programs. 
Similarly, the World Health Organization is leading the conduct of the gender analysis of immunization service delivery within uh, the Can Canadian supported global initiative for vaccine equity or can give. The analysis will shed light on the gender related vulnerabilities and social cultural norms hindering vulnerable women, families and communities from accessing immunization services. Indeed, by emphasizing the social determinants of health, the World Health Organization is contributing to broader societal goals on education, gender equality, and reduced inequality. This integrated approach aligns with the spirit of leaving no one behind, as advocated by the SDGs, and emphasizes the importance of comprehensive strategies for sustainable development. Professor Chair, I would like to conclude my statement by reaffirming the World Health Organization commitment to continue to contribute to the betterment of health and well-being through research and partnerships, including by establishing and strengthening collaboration with teaching and research institutions like your institute, UHAS. Indeed, research and academia can play a significant role in accelerating Ghana's journey towards attaining the Sustainable Development Goals by the, the deadline of 2030 if appropriate policy direction and investment is made. I wish you a successful uh, deliberation and thank you again for inviting the World Health Organization to this very important conference. I thank you. Thank you, Professor Casolo. And now I would like to not be remiss in acknowledging the role played yesterday by our librarian, Dr. Theresa Edu, who was ably assisted uh, or ably assisted, you know, they collaborated with Ms. Danashri Moodley from Elsevier. Uh, they held a workshop, a pre-conference workshop for those who registered in advance. And this was very, very useful and impactful for how to conduct their research going forward. And so we want to thank Dr. Edu for playing that role. I also want us to acknowledge the presence of our Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor Harry Tagbo, as he's formerly known. And I want to take this opportunity to inform you officially, you heard it from the horse's own mouth here, that he has recently been installed chief of his hometown of KG in the Volta region. And so, from here on out, instead of just calling or referring to him ordinarily as Professor Tagbo, we are now required to add the extra title of Togbi. Togbi, Professor Tagbo. <laughs> Give it up for Togbi Tagbo. <laughs> Our Pro Vice Chancellor, congratulations. So now I want to invite the next, <laughs> pardon me, the next stakeholder, partner representative in the person of Ms. Berlinda Amankwa. She is the program specialist on HIV health and development at the United Nations Development Program. And she is located here at the Ghana Country Office. She's a public health professional with over 15 years experience in health and development and deep passion for addressing the key public health challenges of our time. Her current work includes supporting the development and implementation of innovative, sustainable, inclusive health interventions that promote equity and actually make a difference. Belinda holds a master's in public health and a BSc in zoology from University of Ghana. Ms. Belinda Amankwa, Akora Belinda. Thank you very much.
much. <laughs> Professor Lee Diaziato, Vice Chancellor, University of Health and Allied Sciences. Togbi, Professor Harry Tago, Pro Vice Chancellor. Dr. Jokutu from the Volta Regional Health Directorate. Professor Michelle Turner. Professor Japon, Director of Institute of Health Research. Professor Kasolo, WH representative. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. Good morning. I bring you warm greetings from UNDP and Dr. Angela Lusigi, UNDP's resident representative, who would have loved to be here, but is currently out of the country on an important assignment. It is indeed a great pleasure to be here on this occasion of the 2023 Annual Research Conference on the theme Forging Partnerships in Achieving the SDGs, the Role of Academic and Research Institutions. In 2015, the entire world came together to adopt the Sustainable Development Goals as a universal call to end poverty, protect the planet, and ensure that by 2030, people everywhere enjoy peace and prosperity. The SDGs were very different from the MDGs, as these were global goals for everyone, regardless of where they lived. The SDGs also represented a radical and far-reaching shift in approach to international development because by design, it required deliberate and extensive collaboration across all sectors for effective implementation. Indeed, so integral is the need for collaborative efforts and partnerships to achieve the SDGs that an entire goal, SDG Goal 17, is dedicated to encouraging and promoting effective partnerships for the achievement of the SDGs. UNDP, as the UN's foremost development agency, knows the key importance of partnerships for delivering the SDGs. We acknowledge that delivering on the SDGs at the needed speed and scale requires close partnerships with a wide range of actors, leveraging diverse cap capabilities, resources, and expertise. Thus, UNDP works with a wide range of partners across government sectors including government, civil society organizations, UN agencies, multilateral donors, private sector academia to support countries achieve the SDGs. Academia and research institutions such as University of Health and Allied Sciences particularly have a crucial role to play in helping countries achieve the SDGs by generating knowledge, conducting research, and providing innovative evidence-based solutions to address current global challenges. Over the past years, UNDP has collaborated with academic and research institutions to support the attainment of multiple SDGs. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, kindly permit me to share a few of these partnerships. As part of efforts to support action on climate change and its impacts in support of SDG 13, UNDP partnered with the University of Ghana during the COVID pandemic to assess the impact of increased use of PPE including face masks on the environment, human health, economy, and Ghana's commitment to international climate and environmental agreements. The research findings were very insightful. It highlighted the fact that the urgent need to consider the impact of single-use masks on the coastal environment, and also to prioritize microplastics within our plastic waste management plans. The University of Ghana remains a key partner in our waste recovery programs and also recycling drive. To strengthen the implementation of the World Health Organization Framework Convention on Tobacco Control in support of SDG3, UNDP, in partnership with WHO, collaborated with RTI International to conduct a tobacco investment case to highlight the huge health and economic returns for strengthening tobacco control in Ghana. Indeed, the study showed that tobacco use cost over 600 million CDs in economic losses, and implementing the WHO FCTC measures will save more than 20,000 lives in Ghana. Supporting the implementation of UHC is very critical and very essential in ensuring that we achieve the health-related SDGs and also reduce health inequalities. Health technology assessments, or HTAs, as we popularly refer to them, represents a key entry point for achieving universal health coverage, especially in resource-constrained contexts like ours. UNDP, through the Access and Delivery Partnership, collaborated with Thailand's Health Intervention and Technology Assessment Program, HITAP, 
London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, and also the National University of Singapore to strengthen capacities of Ghana's Ministry of Health in health technology assessments and vaccinology. Furthermore, UNDP-led access and delivery partnerships collaboration with Saving Consortium, a consortium led by UHAS, which includes Ministry of Health, Food and Drugs Authority, is supporting health system strengthening and capacity building for the access and delivery of the malaria vaccine and other health technologies. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, no sustainable development can occur without peace. That is why UNDP is also partnering with Kofi Annan International Peace Keeping Training Center to conduct research on preventing violent extremism and maritime insecurity in the West Africa sub-region, and especially along the Gulf of Guinea. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, with barely a decade left to 2013, the SDG goals are in deep trouble. And this was highlighted by the Sustainable, Sustainable Development Goals Report in 2023, the special edition which was titled Towards a Rescue Plan for People and Planet. An assessment of about 140 targets showed that about half of these targets are moderately or severely off track and over 30% have either seen no movement or regressed below the 2015 baseline. Moreover, Ghana's recent SDG Insights report also highlights the fact that 21% of the SDGs related to people are off track, 28% of those related to planet are off track, 17% of those related to peace are off track, 26% of those related to partnerships are off track, and those related to prosperity are 31% off track. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we are living in an era of increasing uncertainty and polycrisis. Multiple conflicts, effects of climate change, the lingering effects of the COVID pandemic, and emerging threats to human health and security threaten to derail progress towards the SDGs everywhere. Partnerships, especially with academia, holds the key to unblocking these and many other bottlenecks to the attainment of the SDGs. Academia and research institutions are instrumental in producing and sharing cutting-edge research needed to understand how to fast-track the achievement of the SDGs and learn from best practices and setbacks. Academia can also support with knowledge transfer and build the tools needed to implement and monitor SDG implementation. I sincerely hope that academia takes up this challenge so collectively we can explore new and innovative ways of salvaging the SDGs. Finally, to conclude, please permit me to end with some sobering words from the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, during the high-level forum for the adoption of a political declaration to accelerate action to achieve the SDGs, SDGs in 2023. He said, and I quote, the SDGs aren't just a list of goals. They carry the hopes dreams, rights, and expectations of people everywhere. It is our sincere hope that through effective collaborations with academia, we can course correct and get back on track to ensure we leave no one behind. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you. And now I would like to invite Dr. Senanu Jokoto. I believe that he has a message for us from the Regional Health Directorate. Dr. Jokoto is the Deputy Regional Director of Health Services for Volta Region and an old friend of UHAS. Thank you very much. A very good morning to all of us. Vice Chancellor Professor Lydia Aziato, Pro Vice Chancellor Togbi Professor Tagbo, our able registrar, Madam Ya Amankwa Opuni, Professor Margaret Japong, the Director Institute of Health Research, the WHO country representative, Professor Francis Chisaka Kasolo. Distinguished deans, senior members of faculty, 
the health fraternity here in Gathered, esteemed guests, our friends from the media fraternity. The Ghana Health Service is deeply honored to be associated with the University of Health and Allied Sciences, and more particularly, to be part of this very unique event this morning. I bring you warm regards from our Director General, Dr. Patrick Kuma Abwaje, as well as the Deputy Director General of the Ghana Health Service, who will certainly join us during this conference. I extend the deepest apologies of Dr. Chris Santos Kubio, the Regional Director of Health Service, for his inability to be here on day one of the conference, but he'll certainly join us as the day goes on. Let me use this opportunity to extend our utmost gratitude to the University of Health and Allied Sciences for the kind of collaboration that we have enjoyed with them. It has been indeed mutually beneficial. A host of outputs have come up from previous research that has greatly helped the health service. And for the want of time, I'll just mention a couple of them. There were important findings from an adolescent health research done in Adaklo district that was spearheaded by Professor Margaret Japon. And I'm happy to say that this informed strategic interventions that have so far yielded positive results. Our teenage pregnancies in that particular district and other districts have declined because of research findings that we had from that particular research. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, we also faced steep challenges with vaccine hesitancy and some of the research work conducted again in collaboration with UHAS or led by UHAS greatly supported the kind of res response that uh, we, we had to implement to get more people to take up the COVID-19 vaccines. We appreciate the fact that as an agency that implements policy largely on behalf of the Ministry of Health, integrating implementation science into our operations is non-negotiable. In that light, we seek to deepen our relationship with the Institute of Health Research on all fronts. Even as we mark progress and identify gaps periodically within the context of the health sector medium-term development plan for 2022 to 2025, we know that certainly we would have to depend on you to be able to achieve our goals. The goal of this particular plan is to increase access to quality essential health care and population-based services for all by 2030 through the following objectives. One, universal access to better and efficiently managed quality health services. Two, reduce avoidable maternal, adolescent, and child health and disabilities. Three, increase access to responsive clinical and public health emergency services. I know that all of us here may have also followed the role that the health service played uh, during the acute phase of the flooding situation in some districts in the Volta region. It's, it speaks volumes uh, to the kind of work that we have to do together to be able to strengthen our public health response in, in such an era. This year's theme, forging partnerships in meeting the sustainable development goals, the role of academic and research institution pairs perfectly with our objectives as a health service. The significance of partnership cannot be underestimated. And previous speakers have already alluded to that, especially to SDG Goal 70, which calls for partnerships to mobilize and share knowledge, expertise, technologies, and financial resources to support the achievement of sustainable development goals in all countries, particularly in developing countries. I am certain that the outcome of the next 72 hours here would certainly be a positive step for the Ghana Health Service as well. 
I therefore reiterate the commitment of the service to building a stronger partnership with all partners here in Gathered, particularly the University of Health and Allied Sciences, the Institute of Health Research, towards the realization of our mutual goals. May we all have a fruitful deliberations over the next 72 hours. Thank you and God bless us all. Thank you, Dr. Jokote. And now we are going to listen to the presentation by our keynote speaker, who could not be here in person. At the last minute, uh, he had to change his travel plans. But we're nonetheless excited. He has done a video presentation, which we will watch from Professor Marcel Tanner. Professor Tanner is Director Emeritus of the Swiss TPH, which is the Swiss Tropical and Public Health Institute. He is a professor of epidemiology and medical parasitology at the University of Basel, and adjunct professor at the Federal Institute of Technology in Switzerland. Professor Tanner's research has ranged over the past four decades from basic research on cell biology and immunology of malaria, schistosomiasis, trypnosomiasis, and filariasis to epidemiological and public health research on risk assessment, vulnerability, health impact, and district health planning. He is the chair of the board of the Drugs for Neglected Diseases Initiative. Ladies and gentlemen, let us watch his presentation, uh, and I'm yes, sure he's joining morning. us online as My well. Thank in, you. Uh, Ho, in Ghana, I'm speaking to you from a little bit cold and rainy Switzerland. And as you can imagine, it would be great to be with you now in Ho, and not to be only two-dimensional on the screen. Thank you very much, dear Margaret and uh, Johnny Diapong, for this invitation. Uh, to speak at your uh, UHAS uh, research conferences this year in 2023. And I promise I will be there in 2024. So thank you very much for this kind invitation. And thank you very much particularly for this privilege to share with you a keynote address uh, this, uh, this morning. We would like now to really move to the presentation mode, and I bring in here the slides, and the slides will also reach you in a separate way, not just in a film, uh, so that you all have these slides. The title of your conference is Forging Partnerships to Achieve SDGs and the Role of Academic and Research Institutes. I mean, this is a very important topic, particularly now when we live a little bit sad times when uh, we hear more about uh, troubles, wars, and difficult situations, and much less about how we work together uh, towards the well-being of our world. Thank you for this possibility to share the experience. I rather think, however, that you yourself, with knowing your work, having visited you, uh, you know very well how important partnerships are in order to move things, to contribute to the needs of the most neglected to our populations. I have actually a few principles that I would like to share with you. I think uh, the partnerships at the beginning are not just there to nicely work together, but I'm pretty much convinced that if we take partnerships seriously, we can contribute to reduce uh, social and economic disparities through science collaboration. Because we live in one world and interdependencies of well-being are very well known, we don't live in the first, second and third world. The disparities, the social-cultural tissue carries uh, the economic tissues, 
I think we can find the explanation in the for the for the disparities in analyzing the social tissue and not so much only the economic tissue. And another important point, which I mentioned many times, no roots, no fruits. If you don't know where you come from, you don't know where you are going to. And if you're too much attached to the past, you're not open for the future. So these are principles, as I said before, the cultural and social tissue matters in which science is being undertaken and it's and which shapes the, the culture of science. And actually, that's where also I see a way forward. I see certainly a way forward in showing you this picture of this old Indian story where you have all these very renowned, experienced experts that ex examine this elephant. The only problem is, and that's important, all these men are blind. So the one who is sitting, who is touching the tooth, the, tr the, the trunk, the leg or the body, they describe something which is scientifically totally accurate. But if you put all these descriptions together, you don't get an elephant. You just get a piece of a tooth. You get a piece of a, of a leg or a, or a little bit a patch of the, of the bell. And this is actually what partnership should do. Across systems and culture, we want to come to complete context. Uh, we want to understand the context. We want to understand the elephant and do not want to behind, uh, behave like our uh, Indian uh, specialists here. But it has nothing to do with India alone. As you know very well, science is very often leading to very fragmented, of course, good science, even to very fragmented results. And it is very the art of system thinking, of interdisciplinary thinking, that we can get the picture together. So why not start from the beginning in this approach in order to see the comprehensive picture and to make a comprehensive contribution to the burning issues. And these are, of course, the uh, sustainable development goals. When I was confronted first by uh, doing partnerships with Africa, I was brought in such a field as this picture shows, an older picture. I first went to Tanzania, it was uh, 44 years ago. And uh, this was the thing, we all went to the field, that's already important, when we went where the problems were. And we had uh, the so-called specialists looking down the microscope and around you had many other people who were bringing the samples to be examined. Of course this was partnership, of course people were there, but that's not a partnership that generates real advances. That was partnership in order to act, to achieve a, a task, to do a survey, but we mean this partnership something which is much more deeper, as you will see. So at that time, I had actually the task given by the Swiss Tropical Institute to me that one would actually transform a field station into a bigger field center. And this was at the very beginning actually a situation by which here the Swiss Tropical Institute was like contributing everything to run this little field station which had uh, two wheels one was a little bit of basic and applied research and one was teaching at the medical assistant training center and the engine was not there. There was just actually an infrastructure that helped to help these two wheels turn. And at that stage, you had the partners, they were local and national, and there was maybe some parastatals, there were some NGOs, and the funding of the whole thing came mainly from Switzerland, from the Swiss Development Corporation, we have the Swiss National Science Foundation and other foundations. And as you look at this situation, it reminds you of also a picture that you know from me. It is actually like a chart that you had here. I mean, you had here like a wheelbarrow that we were pushing from outside, from Switzerland, 
through uh, the bush of uh, peripheral uh, Tanzania. Of course, we did some good research together with Tanzanian colleagues, but it is not a viable thing. That's why I show you here this donkey. We have the, the whole problem that we actually, I mean, have the chart not really moving because we overloaded it with tasks and we had not enough of own engine and so on. So what was the solution? The solution was not just to change people or to train more people. No, it was actually building an institution which is like a four-wheel drive vehicle where actually the whole part of the engine is in Tanzania, is in Africa, like you have in Kintampo or, or, or Navrongo, and actually you have then the four wheels of the activities from a control of communicable diseases to health systems research, but also training as well as direct support to the uh, health authorities. That's how this center actually became a known four-wheel drive vehicle that was running with, from having the field station, creating here a Ifakara Health Institute Trust. Many of you know this evolution, but the point was that one actually gave an independence and not a total autonomy floating in a separate orbit, but a trust that is actually under the national health policies and pursues that through science, through application, and through teaching and training. And we had, of course, on that time, no longer just the Swiss pushing the wheelbarrow. No, we had actually the Tanzanian uh, were fully in charge, we assisted, and we had actually funders that came from the uh, NGO levels, we came from the national, by and multilateral one, as I write here, by and multilateral uh, funding. We had foundations, domestic funding, uh, that's very important. We had private charities, and the Swiss part was actually reduced. So what we had, actually in uh, nine, from moving from 1981 to 96 we were actually creating for the Tanzanian health research as uh, a public health system a four-wheel drive vehicle that was actually able to go through uh, the uh, research questions that were of priority for the population. And you have lived such example, and together actually, together with Mozambique, with Mali, uh, Ghana and Tanzania, we have received at the time in 2008, the Princess of Asturias Award for international cooperation. Not just because we did some nice science, but in partnership, developed these four-wheel drive vehicles, developed centers and not sites. And I think that's was the important point why this was internationally recognized as a step toward the joint action. And this is a step also towards really uh, being able to contribute to burning questions like the ones entailed in the SDGs. So the re result is very simple. It's the story of the flower. You see, instead of having the green is actually the core, of an institution, the blue are the projects, instead of having a site, a trial site, or a project site where projects drive the center. We actually developed in all these countries uh, a, a really research centers that are having different projects, blue, but the center controls like a flower where the center carries the petals of to make a beautiful flower. And so it is actually, this is the recipe which you develop with partnership. Such a trial site, even if you have partnership with whatever partners, be it North, South or South, South, is not viable as long as actually these big projects just drive a site. So it is from a, a 
uh, that where a, a site is driven by one project or a product, you go actually to build a site towards this flower that at the end you have a center which has a portfolio of studies in the field of, of uh, health, intervention studies, clinical trials, population-based studies, and so on. The key issue is not so much each type of studies, but is the portfolio, is the flower, what are, which projects you have here. And if you are actually not only a scientific site in a way, or a scientific center, it's very important that you have also a mixture between projects and programs, the petals that are science, research and training, or direct translation. Well, that's just shown here, the same, it's the same part. It's, you know, see, it's even nicer if you do uh, research, teaching, training, and translation of public health work together. I think it is this what we should aim in partnership to develop, that we have really these centers and clusters of, uh, of expertise that are not just doing one thing, but are really walking the a value chain from innovation to application for the benefit of the population. That's the same story that we had before. So let's keep in mind this, uh, this flower. And there was a long time ago, already 20 years ago more, <coughs> of that we ask ourselves, what is this about partnership? And some of you know very well, there was this commission of the Swiss academies uh, that we thought, what are the criteria to make a good partnership, particularly in the North-South relation, but it's also important for South-South or uh, East-West and so on. These were these famous 11 principles, and they are very simple, and you receive these slides, you can check out the website that is shown here. I mean, there are 11 points from deciding the object, uh, objectives of a study together. With this, you build mutual trust to share responsibilities up to the end, where you also look if there is profit, and there is always profit, even if it's not monetary profit, it's profit in evidence gain, it's profit in people being trained, that one shares this at all levels. These 11 principles are actually describing how we can reach partnership across systems and culture in our thriving of placing science for the benefit of well-being of society. And going back to Tanzania, uh, going to this uh, place, Ifakara, that some of you have even visited, here you see an old picture of 1973. This man here, some of you may know him, is Julius Nerere. He is just scratching his ear. He is not holding a mobile phone on his head, what many people would think nowadays if somebody walks like that. No, uh, Nerere just comes back from the inauguration of a training center and behind, just for those who know, is our founding professor uh, Geigi of the Swiss Tropical uh, Institute. And uh, it's again actually two men from totally different families, uh, uh, from a, a totally different background that have found together to really lift this partnership between two countries in the spirit that I tried to show you before. Because I must say, when launched with this task, I really was very much inspired what these two people have actually done <coughs> and stimulated us. Now, this is again the valley of uh, Kilomero Valley in Ifakara, that's the hospital and so on. But what I want to show you is not just pictures of Tanzania. No, you have also more very nice places in, in Ghana. No, the point is actually that this partnership has actually really uh, made a difference to how 
we do sign. And this is in the title of your conference. One point important is up here that you combine research, teaching and training and services in this triangle. But also when you do this and you work in partnerships on this value chain from innovation to application, you actually change from looking at, the, looking at diseases, you look at interventions, you no longer have just projects, but you look at programs. You don't have field sites anymore. You have centers, as we said before. And you have partnerships according to these 11 principles or even more that you will find. And so with partnerships, you build networks and actually you really engage actively in public health action. And I think is if this is part of the national and global health research systems, we really can make a difference uh, for the benefit of our populations. And one key is always, and that's even if scientists say, I'm only a scientist. No, you should always think how an innovation that is there can reach the populations. Now, the days we discuss a lot that we just went through the uh, COVID, the SARS-CoV-2 uh, pandemic and there people started to see what is all around and they were just focusing on diseases and here you see some and the key issue is of those diseases here, they are all zoonotic in nature. <coughs> zoonotic in nature, you can say okay, but I mean for us as scientists in the health field, the emerging and re-emerging diseases are mainly an issue of zoonotic, not of all. But we have 1,400 pathogens, out of which 800 live in animals and humans. And it's not only the pathogen that counts, it's always the triangle between neglected diseases, neglected people, and neglected health and social systems. And that's how we should see it. And I think that's an inspiration. It's not a problem of complexity. It's an inspiration for partnership that we see this triangle because then we become context sensitive, not like our blind man Indian story. We are context sensitive and we really see the context of where something has to happen, where our science can make a difference. And here I repeat a bit what I said before. It is really from the population needs that you address with science, you go actually and test also that if your science is validated in a context of another population, this population is not the same as this one. So you actually look at the generalizability. And finally, you actually then integrate it into the health system. I think this was an interesting discussion uh, now about uh, 15 years ago with Bill Gates in Africa where he was actually only interested in technical solutions while his wife, just as a side remark, visited uh, the mother and child health centers and, uh, and uh, we discussed and we tried to explain him how important it is to see the whole value chain because the whole value chain is really made up that on the patient's need and the hospital and uh, wherever uh, you look, of course, biomedical and social sciences come together for this innovative part. And when you move from innovation over validation to uh, actually to the application, it becomes much more systems driven. You no longer just have a, one research question that drives, it's a system that actually uh, asks you a little bit uh, to where you, you place your intervention and so on. And so I would actually say that this very much mutual learning and what I said before for change, mutual learning for change, that actually decolonizes and also reduces inequality. You don't have to go to a conference on decolonization. You don't have to go to a conference discussing inequalities. You better engage in partnership that actually address in the questions you ask, 
in the strategies you lead, in the institutions you involve, and the donors you apply for in, uh, in, in partnership, you engage in partnership, then without discussing these uh, grant terms, you will automatically contribute to decolonization and reduce inequalities. And see, you see, this is where we have a change. You see the real thing. Here you see Salim Abdullah with Margaret Chan discussing the application, because what I showed you before, this is actually a totally Northern-based and maybe invalid discussion for these uh, colleagues here. Here is the valid discussion. People from the concerned countries discuss together on how in a system you can apply an intervention. Now you start yawning because you have seen this slide for many times, but in this discussion uh, on reducing inequalities means that you actually really must root your science, not just in partnership by doing it, but actually thinking on how you carry your, uh, your science to the population so the difference which you know from efficacy to effectiveness and as you know very well i mean efficacy just shows does it work while effectiveness shows can it be applied so these and these blue boxes are important the health systems factors as well as the partnership factors and if you do not achieve 80 100 percent in these health system boxes, which is difficult to achieve, then an efficacy even of 80% of a product, be it a drug, be it a healthification approach, be it a vaccine, it collapses to 29 in this example, to 29% effectiveness. So it is, we have to be concerned if we talk about research in partnership, research for the population, that on four reaching SDGs that we truly, truly, truly actually consider what it means to carry a tool to, uh, to the population. That means we must guarantee access, we must know whom to guarantee access, you must get compliance of the providers and adherence of the consumers. This determines how much of the efficacy of a tool you carry to your people. And, very important, equity effectiveness counts. Equity effectiveness meaning that it's if you are effective 80%, but if you are 20% where you are not yet effective, are the poorest neglected people, then of course you are effective, but not equity effective. And if we want to reach the SDGs that we have nicely formulated, the equity principles, the equity effectiveness plays a very important role. And not just universal health coverage, but together in covering or trying to cover universally, equity is the key determinant. And that must, even a basic scientist, the whole day sitting in the lab, must be interested in this concept. What is carried out of the lab to the people must be equity effective. Again, this question, not just discussing efficacy, but really how do we achieve equity? So what do we learn? I think <clears throat> for the main topic of your conference, what is important for research institutions is the spirit that we are all doing this as mutual learning for change, not to achieve own quick benefits, but that we learn together in order to change. This will really uh, make a difference. And how do you do this? You adhere to these ethical standards and principles like the principles the 11 I have shown you. I think it's very important that in all the partnership you not so much look at representation, but you look at competence and not just undefined excellence. You must have actually expertise and experience of real life, and not just academic acrobatics on the clouds. 
So that means you, you need dirt on your boots. You must have sensitivity for the context. And in your context where you work, leave your roles and responsibilities also according to the ethical uh, guideline. Of course, you should be able to talk, as we saw before, to, to maintain the dialogue from science to policy and science to society. And very important for scientists, I always say, and that is a principle in our academies, the scientist never makes policy prescriptions. The scientist only makes policy relevant statements. As soon as we make prescriptions, we are seen to become activists and then we lose credibility in science. You asked about the development goals and what kind of scientific institution do an academic institution. Of course, you not just say, oh, so SDGs are great, but you ask yourself, for which SDGs are for you, for your institution, important? SDC 17 is for all important because that's the one on partnership. But then you must decide if good health, education or uh, economic growth or whatever, or peace is important. That's a decision of your institution. And what you see is with small uh, uh, red frames, they are, for instance, now the red frames of the Swiss Tropical Institute. Swiss Tropical Institute says, we accept all the, um, the uh, SDGs, but we particularly concentrate on three, four, eight, and six, and 16. And then you say, why not partnership? He talks the whole time about partnership, because partnership is seen as like the backbone. For me personally, number 17 is the backbone of all those. We do not achieve it if we are not really base ourselves on partnership principles. So it's also important, but in another dimension. And then there's something very interesting. Once you have done this, you ask yourself in your institution, so you see again the SDGs with the different colors, and then you hear something very interesting. You see your aims of your institution, and you look at where our inequalities highest, and you try to see how much from each of the SDGs that looks all a bit wild is contributing to what? So how much actually you are really in the choice, the strategic choice that an institute does in science and application, how much do they contribute in health and well-being, but also how much they are balanced to also achieve the inequalities. And that is actually a, a, an analysis that looks wild here, but it's very simple, that you take your strategic plan, take all your scientists, if junior or senior, and you actually examine how these are interconnected, your, your strategic plan, with the SDGs. And that actually then helps you to refine the research agenda towards SDGs because it shows you where you would invest more or invest less. This is just an example and each institution must do it on, on, on its own. And you see also with this actually successfully pursuing these lines here means that you have really a solid backbone of partnership. So number 17 basically is the backbone of the story. Nothing goes without that. So we come back to our situation, all of us, here in Switzerland, you in Ghana, we all have to behave or we are in a situation that we have to behave like this man. We have actually to balance many things. We have to balance the research, the training, and well as the direct translational work. These are the clubs that we have to juggle. And we walk the, the, the ro rope from innovation over validation to application. That's our life. 
We have to think about how we actually surf, how we can generate access. We discussed this. We know that the political system that has decentralization has advantages for access. We have to be sensitive to local priorities as well as we discussed the equity. So what does this man actually have in his hands? Not just research, training and, uh, and application, but on the one hand, he has one club to juggle his system thinking and to think about in a system, which investments do you do? That's maybe sometimes strange for academics, for researchers, but we don't think anymore in a project here and a project there. We think, where do we invest in order to proceed? Investment thinking. This does not mean profit maximizing, but has investment for well-being, for good health. So that's one job. The second one is that we have really to maintain a good culture of science. I mean, belonging to that is not just running for publications and age in the days, but actually really trying to be context sensitive, that we honor, honor team efforts, partnership, and that we have a, a culture of science, that the scientist does not become an activist, but a person who is an honest broker of evidence to actually show what can or could be done as options in a society. And of course, you have to think always of your staff and people, how not only just to motivate them, but actually how you really have the competence and not just the representation of the key people that help you walk this road from innovation to application with research, training and translation. Yes, so when I try to summarize now, it is important, the key is the culture of science and its ethics, but not only the individual ethics, but the public health ethics. And of course, the second point, that's why we have this lecture, is partnership, the thinking of mutual learning for change. And that becomes the principle in, in uh, purpose-oriented science that we not ask who helps whom, who contributes how much, but how actually we learn together in order to change. So we remain humble and we should always think in this no roots, no fruits, what we would not be today, what we are today, uh, if we would not have had this experience of partnership. The best sentence to recognize and honor partnership is that we say, we have only made it through that one. And we have also only made it because we could in this mutual learning for change, basically more uh, learn than we could give. Those who think that they just give everything and the others have to eat it, that's not the attitude that fosters partnership. And I think we always should think that we are always on the way. Uh, as many people, the aim is already is the way we walk. It is not a defined milestone somewhere. And it is through that that we can make a difference and contribute to the SDGs, the topic of your conference. So here I have two pictures of naive painters from Tanzania. Some of you know Pinga Tinga. This is from my home country, from Switzerland, a naive painting. It, we don't have giraffes, but we have cows. So we have actually the cows there. And what I want to say is something which is very important in the working together and where I was really privileged to learn this from our, our partners, mainly from Africa. It is not about creating great things, but mainly about seeing and doing the very ordinary things with the conviction, appreciation, and joy of their basic intrinsic values. So you see, don't set out to do great things, but just do the common things right. Then you do great things. All those who set out to do great things will never do great things. Those who take the common things 
and ask the research question, pursue the science in a good culture, they will make huge contribution. And I'm sure that's what you do and what you are continuing to do. That's why, my dear colleagues, thank you again for this kind invitation. And I'm sure 2024 I will be with you. I promise this to Margaret. And please think of what this friend has written on his boat. Don't give up. Don't give up. And then we make it. And I'm very thankful to you, but also to all my dear colleagues all over the place. I could not mention them all, that have actually given me so much of their experience and expertise in this spirit of mutual learning. Have a nice conference. I will be thinking of you. And again, sorry, sorry, sorry that I'm not with you. I will be thinking of you and wish you a most successful conference. And we will hear from each other. We'll keep in, in touch. And bye-bye for now but we are together. Thank you. We will now view a presentation by the cultural troupe, after which we will listen to the Vice Chancellor's closing remarks.
the vice chancellor. Thank you very much, uh, Director of Public Affairs. All too soon, the first session is coming to an end. We just have a photo session and snack, then it's over. Anyway, for the sake of those who joined late, for those whose uh, internet may not be stable online, I just want to retreat a few things I deemed important from all that we've heard today. The issue of high quality research transcends all the speakers this morning, especially our keynote addressee, Professor Turner, we are grateful for the insightful presentation and for the depth of knowledge that you've shared with us. Our WHO rep, country representative, highlighted inclusive partnerships. He referred to partnerships with the University of Ghana and Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology and affirmed that UHAS is going to be in his story, the next time he's making a statement at certain events. And we thank him very much. So let's give him a round of applause. We already have a history with WHO from our School of Public Health at Hohoi, the center that has made history in terms of clinical trials was actually started by the WHO. So we have that history. And our faculty, our professors, have contributed immensely in different aspects of the WHO's work, including our current dean of the School of Public Health, Professor Frank Baden, who was trained by the WHO and worked in the space for a number of years. We also had very insightful comments from UNDP representative here, and I'm very grateful that at least UHAS was mentioned as part of their previous work. And moving forward, I'm sure that we'll continue to work together. One of the areas I'm very interested in is the area that is supported the Ministry of Health in terms of health technology. And once Dr. Dokoto is here, I am appealing that subsequently when such projects come in, please add UHAS. You know, UHAS, we are only health. We are the only university, public university, dedicated to train health professionals. And we train before they come into service. And so if you involve us, will train them at a level that you can just consume them when they come into service. So uh, please, we want to be part of the initiative for the collaboration moving forward. As for the regional health directorate, we are already in bed as a tank and a teeth. And without you, without the support of your facilities and your staff, we will not be here today as the leading university when it comes to health training. Our programs are all skill-based, and it's your staff and your facilities that have helped us. Um, in fact, this year, the best national level student pharmacy was from UHAS. The best nurse was from UHAS and the best midwifery student was also from UHAS. It has never happened in this country that one university will have three best students in three disciplines. It has never happened. So at least we 
are doing our best. So thank you very much, Dr. Jogo, to extend our gratitude to the regional director and, of course, the director general of the Ghana Health Service, that we appreciate the partnership. I don't feel competent to summarize Professor Turner's keynote address. In fact, it was very, very, very insightful. But I think that there are a few things here that I want to uh, retreat. I picked up the three key areas of research, service, teaching, and training. That is the core mandate of tertiary institution. That is why we are here. And thank you, Professor Tana, for drawing the picture so clearly, the fact that we as researchers, as academics, must always keep our eye on that triangle you showed us. We thank you for also working with the African continent, Tanzania, your audio trail there. Everything is for the good of the people. And I'm sure that in Tanzania, you find some Ghanaians there. And so we are grateful that you work with the African continent for so many years and for all the innovations that you introduce in that country. I also wish to draw attention to his call, not to look at a disease, but look at intervention. That is what you has, we stand for. Our core values also specify community service. And so we are very much interested in interventions that can bring positive outcomes. And again, your call to look at emerging and re-emerging diseases and also the issues that come into when the researchers say this is uh, having high efficacy, but then at the end, is it effective? And you draw attention to issues of access, who is using whatever it is that we are producing, um, issues of compliance, issues of adherence. And these are very, very important when it comes to outcome of our work or our interventions or our service as healthcare professionals. I cannot leave here without leaning on your call on effective communication skills. As healthcare professionals, no matter how skilled, how intelligent, how knowledgeable we are, if we are not able to communicate to the level of the recipient of care, taking into account our sociocultural context, we are doing nothing. And so, Professor Tana, thank you so much for this very, very, very insightful keynote. Um, there are a few more I took note of, but I'm sure that all of us took our lessons from it. Before I um, draw the curtains to this morning session, is to thank all of you again, especially those who registered on time, and even those who registered on site. We are grateful. Without you, we don't have any conference. We also want to thank our international partners. In fact, um, the universities that um, we had people registering are our partner universities. University of Georgetown or Georgetown University has worked with us for a number of years. McGill University, we have partnership with the Spread Newton Banker School of Public Health and our colleague here is having a current relationship or engagement or partnership with them, and we want to grow it further and further. We also have our own foundation attending from Obafemi Awolowu University in Nigeria, and we say, welcome back home, and do stay with us for a number of weeks before you go back. We also would uh, like to acknowledge the African Institute for Health in Kenya and for the relationship we have um, journeyed uh, over the years. So to all our international partners, 
we acknowledge you and we wish to say that next year, encourage more of your colleagues to join. In fact, the Volta region is the tourist destination when it comes to Ghana as a country. The largest man-made lake is here. The highest mountain is here. We have the Monkey Sanctuary. And we have a lot of other places that you can visit. In fact, it's the cleanest city here in Ho. Here it comes to Ghana. Ho is the cleanest, stress-free. Very. Um, the weather is also very nice. And I'm sure that when you come, you will enjoy staying with us. Um, also, before I leave, is the acknowledgement to the staff of the University of Health and Allied Sciences. Today, uh, we have the accreditation board visiting some of the schools. I know that some of the schools are declaring their um, exams because next week, Monday, is academic board. But we are here in our numbers, and we want to appreciate you most especially for taking time off all the things that are going on. Some are teaching uh, in terms of the assignment students are on the ground. But you are here, and it's very, very encouraging to see you here. Again, maybe I'm talking too much, but I think this is my last comment. I want to thank the deans and directors here. I see a number. So dean of School of Medicine, if you can wave and let's acknowledge you. Thank you very much for making time. Our university librarian, thank you so much for coming. Our acting dean of School of Allied Health Sciences, Aiko, for coming. Our acting dean for School of Sports and Exercise Medicine, our dean for School of Pharmacy, you are here. Okay, our provisi has been acknowledged. Togbe Tagwadetsej is here. And uh, our director of public affairs, the only one, is here. And I think that, have I left any dean, any director out? Come again. Oh, see, our dean of international program, Professor Elvis Takan. Thank you so much for making time. Your presence has made this program unique. And we are sincerely grateful to all of you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Thank you, Vice Chancellor, for those remarks. We will have a photo session shortly. Uh, before that, let me make a few housekeeping announcements. After the session here, we will proceed to this side of campus. You will be led this way, where the snack break is going to take place at the pavilion over there. Um, after that, we will return here for the plenary session. And we expect you back around 11.45 or so. And so let's try to see if we can make it back here by 11.45. Do we have the you has anthem? IT? No? Okay, um, we will do that before we end this program. Sing the UHAS anthem. Okay, so photo session. Are we ready? Mr. Balfour? Where's your team? Okay, like we usually do, we will all come down the aisles and flank the people in front so that we can take a group photo. And so let's plan to do that. And we'll take more also when we go outside and we're engaging during the snack break. But let's take one in the room here for the record.
Please bear in mind, when you go out there, we have the posters also positioned on the walkway out there. And so do not forget to stop by and look at the posters. Thank you.
Hello. So the ushers will lead you to where we are having the snack. Ushers, please lead the guests to where we are having the snack.